You really love her that much, huh? Oh, yes, sir. Does she know about the stuff you've been doing here? No, sir. Does she love you? Oh, yes, I'm sure of that. In fact, she's even given me proof. Proof? What proof? Aldo! What are you calling him for? I think you're gonna need some more bicarbonate. Why? Now, keep in mind, Mr. Provolone, this is 1931. We're all sophisticated adults here, right? This doesn't bode well. Your daughter and I are lovers. What? Pop this guy! Wait, boss, we can't have a stiff in the house with company coming. He's right. It ain't proper. The last thing I ever wanted to do was upset you. Why should I be upset? You wake me up in the morning and tell me you're stealing my money and sleeping with my daughter? You guys see anything to be upset about? You're lucky you didn't upset me today. If you didn't upset me like this yesterday, you'd be wearing a cement kimono. You don't have to give me your answer right now. Good! Because I want to talk to my sweet little girl first, Anthony. Don't you call me dad. Say boss. And don't you call me boss. Sorry, boss. Let me show you the door. There's the door! Keep your eye on my office and make sure my daughter don't go nowhere, huh? How'd she get in there? I've been watching this door the whole time. Not Lisa, Teresa. You got two daughters? Who did this thing to you? Ted, Mama. Daddy knows he met with him this morning. Well, who is it? Better you hear it from your own daughter's lips. It's Oscar. The, the chauffeur? chauffeur? Why are you acting so surprised? You knew. Of course I knew. I just had no idea. Be right back. But no look at us. We already married. See, we married real good. I got them bambinos. He got eight. You know got them bambinos. I got them bambinos. Oh. I, I got Anna Maria. I See? got uh, Salvatore. I got Fabrizio. I got Antonio. I got Mario. I got Big Luigi. See? I got Little Luigi. See? I got Luigi Jr. I got See? Giuseppe. And I got Figaro. Figaro no use. Figaro come from the milkman. <laughs> I make a joke. Did I ask for the Fenucci roll call? Scusi. <laughs> yeah, scusi. Teresa, come back. Teresa! Thank God I'm not pregnant. What are you two been doing up there? Get out of my way. Why, uh, you ought to... What do you want? Oh. Excuse me. Could you tell Senor Provolone we in a hurry? We gotta do another guy at 11 o'clock. You do more than one a day? Oh, summertime we do six, eight a day. It's a cutthroat business. And if we get backed up, we gotta work we can. And we know like that. Now we family man. Mm. You treat it like it's a normal business. To us, it's an art. Mm -hmm. Show him the pitch. What do you think it is? You guys did this? Who else? Ask Fenucci. Oh, we get plenty of business from this speech. Huh? Maybe someday we do you too, huh? And when we get through with you, nobody gonna recognize you. Che cosa fai? You look a little pale. You okay? Probably Judge Crater. Oh, hi, Dr. Paul. Come on in. The boss been expecting you. <laughs> Albert, did you realize what you just did? What? You used the past participle without a modifier. I did? What's the rap on that? Cool your heels, Doc. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Marvelous. Aldo's a treasured trove of linguistic anomalies. I heard that. Middlesex. What? You're from Middlesex County in New Jersey. Am I right? Yeah. New Brunswick. I knew it. You see, the New Jersey accent becomes increasingly nasal the further south one goes. That's an amazing talent, Doctor. <laughs>
Have you ever thought of working carnivals? Young man, I've made a serious study of the English language. In my travels, I've uncovered 2,700 sub-dialects in the United States alone. Now, you take the attenuated vowels of the East Texans. All that travel must cut into your home life, Doctor. Well, I don't spend as much time with Mother as I would like. But she's got the cats. A brilliant scholar like yourself is still single? Oh, work has always come first. This weekend, I'm off to Appalachia to study regional colloquialisms among the coal mining community. Morning, Doc. Now, now, Mr. Provolone, where are those G's? In here. No, no, you're not enunciating. Good morning, Dr. Poole. Oh, yeah, right. Don't you have something to do? I'm glad I'll no longer be working in this house. From now on, I'll be having servants of me own. You'll find out what a picnic that is. Shocking insolence. I would have terminated her immediately. I can't do that anymore. The best I could do is fire her. Listen, Doc. I'd like to talk to you about a little difficulty my daughter's having. Really? She seems to have such nicely rounded diphthongs. That's what got her into this gym. You see, my daughter's turning 18 and she wants to get married. Well, she's charming. He was a lucky man. You are, Doc. <laughs> well, I'm flat. What? Damn, son of a... Gun, gosh almighty. Jeez and crackers. So sorry to keep you waiting, Father Clemente. Angelo, you remember Father Clemente. Morning, Father, and thanks again for the swell job you did on Papa's funeral. I know he'd be proud that you kept your promise to him. The father is here to collect for the building fund. Oh, by the way, congratulations on your daughter marrying Bruce Underwood. Oh, I'm afraid there's been a change, Father. She's now marrying a nice Italian boy, Anthony Rossano. That's all for the better. Nothing like a big Italian wedding. Anthony Rossano. Well, forget Anthony. She's not marrying him anymore. What? Well, uh, well, that's a shame, but she's young. Someday she'll find the right one. She's found the right one. Who? Dr. Poole. Dr. Poole? Hello? Get back in the room. <clears throat> Please, correct me if I am wrong, but did I? Or did I not tell you to keep an eye on this particular bag? I did. I watched the bag of underwear the whole time. There wasn't underwear when I left. There was 50 grand in cash. Who was right? You are an ox and a moron. How did 50 grand change into underwear? That's what I'm asking you. Maybe it was a miracle. You know, like the loaves and the fishes. Snaps, are you sure there was cash in that bag? Yeah, little Anthony stole it. If little Anthony stole it, then he's got it. No, you blockhead, he stole it, then he gave it back to me. Why'd he give it back to you? To buy back the jewels. What jewels? The jewels he stole from me. He stole jewels from you, too? Yeah, so he could marry my daughter. Lisa. That Lisa, Teresa. How come nobody's never met this daughter, Teresa? Because she's not my daughter, capiche? Yeah. Your daughter's not your daughter. And the cash that used to be the jewels is now your underwear. Now you got it. I got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 